All right, so in this lesson, we're going to talk about surfaces, and we're going to start with a surface overview and some basic uh, surface concepts within in Civil 3D or within most uh, design application software packages. Uh, we'll then get into the user interface. We'll create a simple surface. We'll add the point group. Uh, we'll look at the brake lines and different methods for, for selecting brake lines. We'll look at a little bit of an, some analysis and adjusting a surface, as well as taking a, a closer look at surface styles. We'll also discuss a little bit about surface editing, creating surface from a point cloud, using the surface boundary tool, as well as doing some additional surface analysis, such as elevation ranges and user-defined contours. And then we'll also look at the surface annotation features, and then also take a look at the new or relatively new surface uh, level of detail option. As we get into the surface overview, what I typically like to talk about is discussing how a surface is created or built. Now, you can see here I have a surface in my drawing and it's got you know some, some color ranges, elevation ranges, but let's take a look at it in the object viewer. And if we look at it in the object viewer and we rotate it up on its side, you can see we've got a little bit of vertical exaggeration to it, but basically what this is, it's a bunch of triangles and, and that those triangles are generated from XYZ data or point data. And you can get that point data from points, Kogo points like we've talked about, from break lines, uh, 3D polylines, feature lines, a lot of different ways that you can get uh, that information and data to build a surface. Um, usually what I like to do is I always start with, with a, a training aid and, and basically this is a box and a rectangle and my, my goal is to try to get you to visualize this being made with triangles and if you think about it that to make one side of this box I have to have two triangles so what would happen is that I would have an XYZ point here an XYZ point here an XYZ point here and here as well as on the other corners. So basically I'm gonna have eight, so I got four points here and I've got four points here. And, and those points are gonna generate my, um, you know, the, the basis of my box. But then what it's going to do is it's gonna interpolate across and create a triangle across the box. Okay, so we'll make that a little bit darker so you can see it. And I basically form two triangles. So I usually ask how many triangles would it take to make this box? And I get all kinds of answers, but the the answer is actually 12 to make the box. I'm gonna need two per side, and if I've got uh, basically six sides, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, including the bottom, it would take 12 to make that box. And what that allows you to do is really kind of visualize the surface in triangles. And if you can take that same visualization, take it out to the field, look at curbs and, and drainage ditches and so on, then you can, you can determine that, you know, whether or not you have the right amount of shots or the right amount of data to actually make that triangulation. Um, I wanna show you a couple other things and why this is, is important. And it's important basically because if I have a point here and I have another point over here and then we put another point down here and another one over here, the software is gonna triangulate between these points, okay? So it's gonna make basically a box. But then it has to determine which way to make the triangle. And the way that it, it kind of accomplishes this is it goes based off of what we call is the three closest points. Now, the three closest points, not only in the uh, horizontal direction, but also in the vertical direction. So if this elevation here was 100 and this elevation over here was 105 and then this elevation here was 102, and then this elevation over here was 101. The software has to take those four points and interpolate between, between them to figure out which way it should create the triangle. Now, by default, the software is gonna to go to the three closest points. So what it's going to do is it's going to interpolate from the 100 elevation to the 102 elevation because vertically, they're closer than 101 to 105. So if you interpolate that, basically that elevation right there then becomes 101. So a 101 foot contour would essentially have to go and pass through this point here up to that 101 and then would have to go back to the next 101, which would end up being over here, okay? 
So what it would happen is it would triangulate and the contour would look something like that. Well, if the software or if the ground actually had a little bit different uh, look and the triangle went from this corner here up to that corner there, then that same point, the elevation would end up being a 103. So that 101 contour would essentially start here and still have to pass through a 101, right? So it would essentially go all the way up through there and not create that little, that little triangle, that little, uh, you know, interpolation between the middle. So you can see that by the direction of the triangle affects the way that these contours would then be represented by this triangulation. And you can see that at the same point, I could have actually two elevations. Now I'm exaggerating this a little bit, but this is the theory, this is a concept. So it's very important to really look at your surface and analyze it to make sure that you have the right data and the data is in the, in the proper uh, location. Now, one other um, concept that I like to talk about is basically if you take a look, and I'm just gonna put some more points in here, and let's say that we surveyed some points down the center of a stream. All right, so I'm just gonna interpolate, and I like to call this my skateboard ramp, because what happens is that if I was to connect these points that have been uh, calculated, and this is a stream that is deeper than it is wide across, okay, so that's the profile or cross section of the stream, what would happen is the triangles would go like this. So basically, it's going from the top of bank to the top of bank here, okay, so across the top of bank, and then the triangle leg is going down into the stream to the center line of the bottom. And then because these are close enough uh, together, it would probably, you know, triangulate like that. This would come over to here and then go down. So basically, you know, these triangles would represent what would be the bottom or the side banks of the stream because I have basically two triangles on one side, two triangles on the other. But then what's happening in, in this area in here is that it's shooting, oops, let me get out of that. It's going again across, okay? And then this is gonna go across because these points here are closer. And basically, I, you know, that's my top. So what's done is it's gone and I started, you know, up in, up in this area up here at the top of the stream, went down to the bottom of the stream, or along the bottom, then back up a ramp, and now I'm on a flat top and then back down. So it's basically not the correct interpolation or triangulation. So what I really wanna see, let's get rid of this, and we'll get rid of this. We'll clean this out as well. Is in a stream, or a road, because a stream basically a road is just the crown, this would just be reversed, is I wanna see triangulation that looks more along the lines of it shooting down the center of the stream and then interpolating, you know, maybe something like this. So that I'm seeing these, these triangulations and wedges. And, and the way we accomplish that is what are called with break lines. So everything, you know, for so far I've been talking points and what we would end up having is a break line that ran down the center of the stream here, and another one along the top edge here, and another one along this top of the uh, top of the edge of the stream here as well. And what that does is it keeps, whenever there's a break line, a triangle line cannot cross the break line. So two main components in a surface, uh, point data and break lines, and those are the, the couple uh, pieces of data that we're really gonna focus on um, in this particular lesson, in this particular class. So, um, <clears throat> Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how a, a surface is designed and created and built. And the idea or the goal would be to have something you can see here. This one is actually a designed a surface rather than an existing ground surface. But with some you know proper uh, analysis uh, and proper location of data, you can see that you can really uh, determine a, a decent surface. And again, this has some exaggeration to it. So you know we've got our low spots for our catch basins and we've got our building pad. Um, and then in the back over here, we've got our, our pond. Um, so again, that's the idea of creating a surface inside of Civil 3D, or, or at least the data, the concepts, the theory. Um, now, with the surface, again, we have to have data in our drawing, we have to get data in our drawing. But before we get into that, let's talk about um, a little bit of the surface 
the, the surface functionality within within the user interface.